So the Jeep is back. If you guys didn't know, this one is a car that we had detailed several months ago. We did the inside and outside, but the owner is obviously still taking this thing off road, which means that we have ourselves an outside only detail today. But at the very end of this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the end results of a full polish and a ceramic coating on this thing. And let me tell you, it turned out insane. So make sure you guys stick around to the very end to see those end results as well. And if you are new, hit that subscribe, turn on those notifications. So that way you guys don't miss out on any future videos. Here we go. Now to start this detail, the majority of the work is gonna be in the pressure washing phase because we can't do anything until we get all of this mud off the car. But the good news is for me that the car has been sitting outside since the owner got it muddy and it's been raining a lot in Ohio. So the mud never had a chance to completely solidify on the surface and the underbody, which is great news because it does make it a little bit easier to get it off despite the fact that it still took several hours just to get the car to a point where I could even wash it. So the top on this car actually had a lot of mold on the surface. So I'm guessing since the last detail, the last six months or more, it's been sitting outside to have this done to the surface of it. But the pressure washer took care of it. I was able to even write subscribe on the roof. So if you haven't subscribed, smash that down below. And because you guys have been so supportive of this channel, we've reached a million subscribers and I've been giving away $300 gift cards in the last two videos. And I have three more to give away. And for last week's, Michael Houghton, you are the winner of that gift card. And to enter in for this week's gift card, I need you guys to comment below. If you could get any car today, right this second, what car would you pick up, or truck for that matter? Go ahead and comment down below, and that'll enter you guys in, and I'll pick a winner in next week's video. So make sure you turn on those notifications so that way you can come back and find out if you're the winner. Now the one thing I noticed about this mud that was funny was there was a lot of hay and straw and things like that. So I know the owner lived on a farm, but I'm guessing after all the harvesting was done this past season, he definitely had a good time running around in the fields. I'm honestly going to have to ask him if I can come out next time he does something like this because um, I used to do this in Florida with my friends. They always had big trucks and four wheelers and dirt bikes. And honestly, that's one thing I miss that I haven't done in a long time is go off roading. And um, I'm definitely going to have to consider doing that. I don't know if you guys ever off roaded, but it's a blast and it's definitely something to try if you've never done it before. For this underbelly, I haven't picked up one of those underbody sprayers yet that shoot up like with four nozzles. It's something I definitely want to pick up, but even if I had that tool, because of the way the mud was collected on the belly pan that covers the differential and the transfer case, and then also just the rails, it honestly would have never gotten everything off. And I literally had to lay down on the ground on a creeper to try to get it all off from underneath the car. And 
Luckily, like I said, everything was still moist and damp from all the rain, and it was still fresh enough that it came off pretty easily with just a little bit of time. The most satisfying part of this detail by far for me was when I was cleaning the wheels because it was just such a night and day difference and with these slow-mo shots you guys can probably appreciate it as well.
In last week's video, I announced that my entire product line for sprays is gonna be coming out soon in the next month or so. And in this shot, I'm using the iron removal product. And it, honestly, it is a complete game changer, just like the rest of the line of products that you guys are gonna definitely wanna pick up when those come out. But for right now, I'm using iron decontamination because I wanna, one, remove it from the wheels because there's rust and everything else. But also, I'm gonna be using it on the entire paint surface because I am gonna be polishing the paint. And here is the aftermath of all the mud coming off the car, which honestly is probably gonna take me twice as long to clean up than the car actually took. But nonetheless, I'm gonna move it out of the way, get it off a lot of that mud so I can spray off the tire pieces that I missed because of where I was sitting before. And then we're gonna use the foam cannon to spray the surface, get any of that extra dirt that's caked on there to fall and drip off with that heavy soap. And then we're gonna be using the two bucket method to clean this paint. When it comes to cleaning tires, I have several tools I use and I have a process that I usually go about. But for these tires, because they had been off-roading, the grooves and the lines had been so ingrained with mud that it seemed like the actual rubber was starting to turn brown. So I had to use a pretty stiff brush to scrub in between each groove. I used an all-purpose cleaner and a tire cleaner to scrub them extensively. And then on the insides, it was pretty straightforward with just lightly rubbing those off. I wanted to make sure that when I put a gel on them afterwards, they were gonna look a nice shiny black color instead of like an off black brownish color like they were before. This rear tire especially, you can see here as I start scrubbing it with the tire cleaner, how much dirt was like literally ingrained in the rubber. Um, it was really surprising, but it definitely took a little bit of extra elbow grease to get these tires to look clean again. But honestly, the end results at the end of this video, you'll see it was worth it.
Now that we're done washing the car with the two bucket method, I'm gonna be clay barring the car. And typically in the past, I've shown you guys using a real clay bar, which you have to knead and fold and all that and whole nine yards. But in the last three cars that I've done, I've been using the synthetic padded clay, which is a pretty much a fake clay. It's not even a real clay bar. It's actually just a pad with a rubber type material that when you use it like a clay bar, it has the same impact, but you just rinse it off instead of having to fold it over to get that contaminant that's caked onto the top surface of that paint off. So now with this beast in the garage, I wanna get the windows off and get the top attached to the body off of it. So that way when I polish the car and I'm working on it, I don't have to worry about taping any of those lines because that material will be already removed from the vehicle. Like I mentioned, the hood has a lot of deep scratches. This clear coat has some cracking. There's a lot of swirl marks. There's also some dents on the hood and some chipping in certain spots, which honestly, the owner doesn't have the expectation that this car is gonna look absolutely perfect by the end of this. But I told him with my one-step polishing compound for before you put on a ceramic coating and my microfiber pad, that 90 to 95% of those imperfections can be removed from the paint. And you'll see the difference between the right side and this part of the hood, how much of the imperfections were removed. If you're interested in getting your paint polished or doing it yourself, definitely consider picking up an orbital polisher. And the main reason why is an orbital polisher travels in an orbital pattern. So it's not in a just a circular motion. And because of that, it pretty much makes it foolproof so you can't damage your paint.
After wiping off that polishing residue, I was surprised to see how much pearl was in this paint. It was something I never realized before, but after just polishing it that one pass, it definitely brought that brilliance to the surface. And I'm excited to see the paint at the end of this after we apply that ceramic coating. Now that the polishing is done, I'm going to go ahead and remove these mirrors and one clean behind the mounting surface, but also I'm going to be using a protectant and also a plastic restorer product that's going to help bring back that original plastic black shine that the mirrors had when they were new. I've been using this tire gel that works really well for one, making tires look nice, but it also does a really good job with plastic trim. And the plastic trim on these fenders is honestly in need of being completely replaced because of how much of the plastic has deteriorated and it's kind of starting to get brittle. But applying a tire gel like this does help make it look better than it did before. Once you're done with that polishing phase, you want to use a product that's going to remove any of the grease, compound residues, or anything else on the surface after the polishing phase that is going to inhibit the ceramic coating or wax or sealants from doing the complete adhesion to the surface as possible. So using a product like this, spray it across the entire car just like a quick detailer and wipe it off with a clean microfiber towel will make sure that your car is as clean as possible before you apply any sort of top coat.
Not only are we gonna ceramic coat the paint, but I also have a ceramic coating that is specific for the glass that we're applying on the car today to make sure that the car beads all water off of it. Even if the car is taken through the mud and the wipers can't keep up, the ceramic coating will help make sure that all of that sheets off the surface as well. So that way when this guy that owns this car decides to go off-roading again, it is gonna make it that much easier for him to see when he's going through whatever mud pit or whatever kind of debris he's running through. If you've never applied a ceramic coating, the one thing that you'll notice that I'm using are these little foam blocks that are essentially just blocks wrapped in microfiber towels. You're gonna to put several drops of the ceramic coating onto it, and then you're gonna be lightly dragging it across the surface in a slight overlapping pattern to ensure you cover the entire surface. And the main goal is, is you wanna apply an even layer across the surface so that way when as it dries, as it settles, you're gonna have a sheet of essentially a protective layer coating on your entire paint. But once you apply it to that entire little section that you're working on, you're gonna be using your palm and a microfiber towel to just wipe it off like a regular compound. So that way you essentially level it completely. So that way you don't have any streak lines or anything like that. It's honestly, it's not super difficult to do. After you do it one time, it really does make it a lot easier the second time you do it. But with the ceramic coating that I'm using in this video, it is really easy to use. And honestly, if you take your time, you guys will have amazing results as well. When you work with ceramic coatings, you sometimes have to use heat lamps to cure them, or sometimes you just need an extended period of time. And for this product, you need about four to six hours before you can get the car wet for it to have enough time to bond and cure to the surface of the paint. And even then, after those four to six hours, you don't wanna wash the car or rub on the surface or anything like that for actually about 14 days after to ensure that the bond is completely on the paint because this coating that I'm putting on this car in particular, with just proper washing and care, this coating should last about three to five years.
Like I mentioned when I was doing the fenders that this tire gel does a really good job at cleaning up the tires. And I also used it on the inside of the rims and on those plastic center cap covers um, to kind of give them that brilliant shine as well and that matte finish that I'm looking for. Now that we're done with the ceramic coating, the tires are all gelled up. We're gonna go ahead and remove any leftover tape that might be keeping the fender gel from getting onto the paint and start reassembling the windows in the canvas top. Now, if I had to pick one part of this detail that was my favorite part, it had to have been when that pearl was starting to come out of that green paint after the polishing phase. I think that was probably my favorite part of it because honestly, I'm a sucker for a completely scratch free finish and I think anybody else is too. It just, it really gives a car life and really just brings back that brilliance that the car had when it was new. And honestly, it's probably my favorite part about detailing. I love transforming interiors. I love cleaning up those nasty messes, but Honestly, when you can polish a paint and make it look like new again and remove these imperfections that are on the surface, it's um, probably one of the most rewarding things for me personally as a detailer. I do wanna say guys, make sure you do hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications because the video for next week, it's gonna be a good one. But I do wanna say, make sure you guys have that subscribe button, push down below, turn on those notifications because the video coming out next week is going to be insane it's something that i have never done on this channel it's going to be awesome and i think it's going to be something that you guys are going to truly appreciate seeing something different so thank you guys for watching today and i'll see you guys next week bye guys